Good afternoon. I hope you are well. Good morning, wherever you are watching across stateside and of course wherever you're watching all across the globe. It's an absolute pleasure to have your company. It is Thursday. Can you believe it? You know what that means. We're two days away. Two... Two days away till WrestleMania. We're getting it. I'm just keeping that excitement. Just retain just a little bit and we'll focus on the weekend. However, before the weekend, we've still got two days of Crafters TV and that's kickstarting today, being a wake-up call with uh, myself. And we're going to introduce Joe just in a minute because he's with me once again today. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be showcasing as to what's coming up throughout the day, which is launch day and then cartload. Cartload being a Thursday. Can't have a cartload on a Thursday, or you can't have a Thursday without a cartload. So this is where we've got, uh, coming up later on is launch day. So that's going to be 3 p.m. here in the UK for you guys stateside. 2 p.m. Eastern time, or of course, uh, 7 a.m. Pacific time. And then what you've got later on, so that's going to end the day here in the UK anyway, and it's going to be cartload. So that's going to be 7 p.m. here in the UK, 2 p.m. No, did I get launch day mixed up? I did. Yeah, let's go back to launch day. Launch day is 3 p.m. here in the UK. We know where this is going to start. We've already started laughing before the show. So, rein it back in. It's Johnny in my ear. Keep saying 10 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Eastern. No. no, I'm not. No, here we go. So launch day is coming up later on. That's 3 p.m. here in the UK, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Cheers in the eye. And uh, 4 a.m. Pacific time. Then what we've got is cartload. So that's going to be 7 p.m. here in the UK, 2 p.m. Eastern time, 11 a.m. Pacific time. And those two shows, not only are they going to be with Joe, but they're also going to be with Debbie Robinson. She's going to be back in the building launching some brand new texture stamps as well as an incredible fast pack cartload that we are also going to be showcasing coming up in Wake Up Call. Now, when it comes to Wake Up Call, uh, we've got a lot of goodies uh, coming throughout the show with the craft fault. But we do need someone to kind of hold the reins as well when it comes to that side of it. And as I said a moment ago, he is back. He's in, what are you now, Joe? Day four of your six? Four of four six. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a real super stint for me this week on Craft TV. And I've got to tell you, I'm loving every single second of it, Craig. Uh, really looking forward to Wake Up Call this morning. Loads coming up. Uh, also, fantastic Craft Vault deals coming up in the show for you too uh, and they are all from the big brand of hunky dory which is going to be amazing uh, there is quite a lot of them which are limited stock though so i would urge you early doors to pop yourself over to the website click that shop the show button and see those craft fault deals i think we've got five or six of them in there for you however they are very low in stock something else it wouldn't be a thursday would it without a throwback thursday and we have got one for you today and I'm not sure you're going to immediately get this one, but here it is. Who is this from the team here at Crafters TV? Let me know in the comments, uh, either over on Facebook or across on YouTube too. Loads of people joining us uh, today already, Craig. Craig, we have, we're a very mixed bag today. We've got people joining us all the way from Trinidad to Doncaster. I mean, what? A, what a uh, collection. Uh, there's loads coming up for you in the show. It's going to be a super day and Craig's got details of some of the awesome stuff that is coming your way throughout the course of the day. It's a double Debbie Robinson day after Craig today too. So I know it's going to be awesome. And we've got a little sprinkling of Tiffany for you in Cartload, which will all, is always uh, a welcome, she's always a welcome guest here at Crafters TV. Uh, but Craig's got details on more of what's coming up today. I absolutely do indeed and that is one show as Joe was saying I'm going to be looking forward to watching at home later on today when it comes to Debbie and Tiffany. So what we're going to be doing is Debbie is going to be showing you these brand new textured layering stamps here. So we've got our sets here so you've got six in total however within each set what you're going to be getting is a multitude of elements within each one. So we've got a selection of textured opulence, we've got Into the Woods, we've got Letter to You, we've got Swirly Floral, Game of Cards and Garden Trellis. These are all about, as it says in the title, layering. So you're going to be layering it up, whether it's your quick dries, water reactives, or maybe even your opaque pigment ink pads. 
popping them into your cards, popping them into maybe your mixed media, your canvases, home decor, lots of different things and ways that you can be using them. So when it comes to the launch day, you're going to be getting these ones for $39.95 here in the UK. For you guys stateside, it's going to be $49.75. You are uh, already getting that saving, although it is being launch day. And then when you go across onto the website, depending on what level you are on Club Inspire, you're still going to be getting your uh, discount on that as well. So a really nice way to incorporate these when it comes to your crafting and to any of your model making. But what you can then also start to do is incorporate them into what we're away to show you right next. And that is the Peacock Collection. So you can then start to lay down the foundation that we've got when it comes to the dies, as well as the embossing folders. We've got the stamps. And maybe you want to bring in some of the actual texture stamps that we showed you a moment ago then you can do. So this is a great uh, little like, collection that maybe you've not uh, seen them before. Maybe you, you've uh, seen them. You've seen other bundle selections in the past, but you've never maybe just uh, reached out to buy them. Maybe you've never tried Nature Garden before. Then this is a really good starting block, either for yourself or for a gift for someone. So this uh, collection that you're getting within this one here, what you're going to be getting is all of this for £34 here in the UK. For you guys stateside, you're going to be for $46. It's including a 3D embossing folder, you're getting a 6x6 embossing folder, you're getting a frame die, you're getting sentiment stamps, you're getting peacocks, you're getting corners, you're even getting uh, stamps that you can layer on top of each other. Maybe bring in the launch day stamps as well, they would work really, really well together. So you can see that on your screen, £34 here in the UK, $46 for you guys stateside. That's what's going to be coming up later on in Cartload, later on uh, on Crafters TV, that being 7 p.m. here in the UK, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time, then maybe something else that you're wanting to, to store all these goodies in. As Joe says, you're going to be uh, having Tiffany popping in as well. So here is your Totally Tiffany Ultimate Buddy Bag Kit. This is where you're going to be getting your free purple uh, lots topped within this one here. So within this one, what you can see is $55.92 here in the UK, $70.42 for you guys stateside. Real good sizable storage in there. So whether it's maybe your great big 12 by 12 paper pads, maybe it's your ink pads, your ribbons, maybe any of your core tools that you want to store in them ones. Real nice. It is a real essential set as well that I like to think. And that's just one of a selection and a number of things, including the Peacock collection that's coming up in cartloads. So maybe you want to bring in what you've got within the launch day stamps, in with the peacock, maybe some other elements as well, then you absolutely can do. What you can also do as well, you can start to incorporate the stamps or peacocks with some of the craft fall elements as well. So to show you and give you a little bit of a tease as to what you can be getting with the craft fall, Joe's back in the kitchen and he's going to go through a few of them for you right now. I certainly am. Awesome craft felt deals, all from uh, the big brand of Hunky Dory, as I said earlier. We've got a really awesome paper collection for you first, which is brilliant. And what you're going to get in here is you are going to receive the Delicate Lace. Now, it's a matte cardstock, and it, you're getting 24 sheets in each pack, so 48 sheets total in here. What you've got is not it's very subtle but you can see it there can't you all of that gorgeous lacy detail that you've got throughout all of these it is an uncoated cardstock this one as well so if you want to ink it or stamp on it absolutely you will be able to so you're going to get the lace and you're also going to get the flourishing leaves in here too which is just beautiful lots of really lovely floral patterns in here it's a really good weight this too so i believe it is 350 gsm it is indeed 300 and 50 GSM and you get 48 sheets of that which is absolutely fantastic it is matte-tastic too but it is still a durable scorable so it means it's got that bendy ink property on there no cracking in your crease which is fantastic £10.22 or £15.34 if you are a platinum member Greg I know you love hunky dory what is it about hunky dory that you love to craft with uh, first and foremost, it's the quality, but then it's the simplicity in which you can create cards and projects with. But then if you are a more advanced crafter, then what you can do is you can take it to the next level and you can start to bring in all your stamps, your dies, your embossing folders from maybe us at Crafters Companion or out there in the, the world wide crafting universe. So a really good way to mix and match if you so wish. So we're going to have a look at that um, uh, adorable scorable just in a second. Let's have a look and say after 
afternoon to a few of you. As Joe was saying, some of you are just popping up from uh, right across the globe as well. Let's say hello to Lynn on Facebook. She's saying fabulous cartload deals as always. There really are. There really is a great selection. So do go ahead and go across to our website, crafterscompanion.co.uk.com or .eu and shop ahead while you get the chance to. Hadassan is saying Peacock Collection is the best ever. I'm probably going to agree with you on that one, specifically when it first came out, the colour tones that ran through that collection were gorgeous. Then Brenda on YouTube is saying, good afternoon from Sax Saxelbury. Saxbury? Saxbury. Saxelbury. Saxelbury. What I got there? Uh, I went to see my daughter yesterday for the first time in over a year. Oh, I bet that was fantastic. I bet that was so good. Lovely to hear and see these things starting to happen a wee bit more as uh, we are creeping up to uh, what hopefully is going to be that end date in June. More and more people seeing their friends and family here in the UK anyway. We had a lovely walk, so lots of CNC to catch up with. Thank you that I can catch up with you all. Oh, brilliant. One of the great things with us at Crafters TV is you can always go back either on YouTube or of course on our website and uh, watch past shows as well. So what we can do is let's have a look at this adorable scorable. And I thought we'll do a little some, something different this time round. So what I can do, that's now two days in a row that I've just about finished my tea by the time I've gone live. I know. And there's no Tracy today. No Tracy. She does make... No, I don't like Julia's cup of teas. Oh, oh. right. That, I, I couldn't resist that. Julia gets as good as she gets as well. So I just thought I would throw that one in there. Th throw that one in there. Don't know about John. Don't know if John makes a good cup of tea. Not sure. Mm, not sure. Not sure. We'll maybe find out by the end of the show. What I've done is I've taken a selection of the cardstock that Joe was showing you. So I've uh, got what is a little bit left. It was the A4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it to two inches in width. And that is the full length of the A4. So all that I've done is I've just trimmed it at two inches. So what I can do then, now I can be using my guillotine for what I'm away to do. But I do find it easier using my scoreboard. So what I'm going to do with my score master, I'm going to go in with my scoring tool and I'm going to score at half an inch all the way along. So half an inch, one inch, one and a half, two, you know, I'm going to keep going along that measurement line. So keep going at half an inch and you're going to do this twice. So I've already got one that's already done. So we're going to keep going. And if you have your large uh, scoreboard, then you can keep going until it's done. With me using my score master, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to as far as I can go here. And then I'm going to pull it in here. And I'm going to line up just to my last bit of the score. And then I'm going to finish it off. So we're going to keep going. Still at that half an inch. So if we keep going and keep going, and by the time we get to the end, we're going to be left with uh, around about a bit of a quarter of an inch little tab on the end. So what I'm going to do is that quarter of an inch, I'm going to trim that one off. So I'm just having a look at the score line. And then we're going to concertina the cardstock. So we're going to go back and forwards on each of them. So concertina or mountain valley, and we're going to keep going. And what I would also do as well is I would burnish each layer, but I don't have time to do all of them. So what I'm doing is I've a concertina them and then I'm going to really just press them together. And don't worry if they're not uh, perfectly straight when you're forming them together, because uh, it's still going to uh, be really effective as to what we're away to do. So let's press that one together. So there is one of them done. And then there is another one. So both of them were the length of A4. And what I've done is widthwise, I've just cut in at two inches. And then I've scored at half an inch all the way down. And then what I'm going to do for this one, either using your tacky glue, or I'm going to use my red liner tape for this one because it's uh, quicker and instant. I'm going to pop a little bit of my red liner tape on the back of one side. So let's trim that one off. We're going to peel that bit off here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap it onto that last tab that we've done. So let's press that. And then that still just creates that concertina join. 
So the only thing I need to make sure is the other one is going still in the same direction. So what I can do is fold that back on itself. And then what we can come along and do is do exactly the same with the red liner tape at the opposite end. And then if we get all of this one going, just making sure that they're all gonna be folded in the same direction. So if I come along, so onto this end bit here. You're gonna make yourself like a little Tudor frilly collar with this, like a Jester's collar. It could be that, or could it be. could be could be a little rosette, you know, it could do a little rosette maybe. What would you win a rosette for, Craig? What would it be? Uh, best in show? Probably, yeah. Or, yeah, or uh, best. Most humble, clearly. <laughs> best. <laughs> Best hairstyle, probably. Best what? Best hairstyle. Mm. Best messy hairstyle. Absolutely. So here we go. So we've now got what looks like that. So then what I'm also going to do is let's bring in a little bit of cardstock. So I'm going to use another bit here. This bit doesn't matter what kind of card it is because you're not actually really going to see this. I'm going to cut it down smaller. So let's then fold all of this inwards so we're folding it in that you can see here and then we're going to scrunch it all up together so we're going to scrunch it all the way up into each other and then what will happen is you'll see how that starts to come together how clever so then what we can do is let's pile a load of hot glue into the middle here so let's pile that one on and then I'm going to maneuver that all into the middle here. So get that going. And then I'm going to hold that for a good few moments or two so that that hot glue will drive. And if we need to maneuver it slightly, we can. So while I hold that for a minute, let's see what else anyone is saying. So Karen Wells on Facebook is saying, shopping on the CC website on my phone and watching CCTV on my tablet. Brilliant. That's what you call multitasking, shopping and watching at the same time. Connie on Facebook is saying, your demonstrations are worth waking up for. Thank you for your help. Oh, my absolute pleasure. It's lovely to hear that. Whether it's myself and Wake Up Call or any of us on the team for any of the shows, it's always lovely to hear that you think that. And um, we've got uh, Shahan was saying, morning, Crafters TV was off last night. Happy to join this morning. It's happy. Uh, it's good to have your company. And Deborah Lefleur on YouTube. Lefleur says, looks like Craig is making a rosette. So I am indeed. So we formed a rosette that we can see here. Then what you could do, maybe a little gem, an embellishment, whatever that you want. So I'm going to pop this little circle that I've already die cut. And this is from the Acorn Wood Adorable Scorable that's also on the show. So what I'm also going to do is I've popped a pad in the middle to really doubly secure the middle of the rosette. Let's put some hot glue. Let's put that one into the middle. And then last but not least, I've cut a couple of circles using the adorable scorer from, adorable scorable from this uh, first set that Joe was showing you. And I'm gonna layer it up. The two dies that I used was my stitched edge circle nest and die. And it was the two largest ones. So let's pop that one there. Let's come on to the back. So this is why your card on the back doesn't need to be anything specific because no one's going to see it. I'm going to pop that even onto there and it's a perfect size. It's giving you a base. You're seeing a little bit of that blue layer on the back. And then what you could do is maybe pop that onto a card front, maybe the top of a box. Maybe you want to put a little bit of a ribbon, maybe someone's name along the middle if you want. But that's something that you could be doing with that adorable scorable. You know, and you could be doing it with any card stock, but it's a nice little project that you can be doing. And you can start to decorate it with extra gems or ribbon or bows or anything like that when it comes to the card stock. Awesome, make sure you grab it then. Remember what you're getting in there, 24 sheets of the lace. Are you also getting in there 24 sheets of the flourishing leaves also? So 48 sheets total, already very busy on that. Uh, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put half stocks gone here. I'm gonna put Johnny on the spot now. Johnny, what is 12 pounds 78 divided by 48? 48. 
26 pence a sheet. What awesome value uh, that is. Right, I want to move on. I want to show you now um, the Get It, Got It Good, uh, which is, of course, this week from Spectrum Noir. Take a look. Yes, it's all about the colour blend pencils for you today. 24 of them in here. Now, 24.99 or 20 or 34.95 is just the cost of the pencils on their own. So when you buy those, as part of the Get It Got It Good, we give you that blending solution that's going to get you that seamless blend from one colour into the next. And also, we're going to include the watercolour cardstock in there too, which is the ultimate. Uh, cardstock for you to use with them. If you come back on Monday when we get a new Get It Got It Good, obviously you won't get the two freebies. So uh, make sure you take advantage of that uh, and you grab it whilst it's on such a fantastic, uh, such a fantastic deal. Uh, Brenda's saying, uh, yes, Craig, it was wonderful, the walk. Thank you. Uh, my hairdresser has just got in touch. I'm having my hair cut on the 15th. I will then be able to see where I'm going. Sounds good. Craig, mine's Monday. When's yours? A couple more weeks for you. Yeah, a couple more weeks because I'm waiting until uh, I go home at the end of this month for a little break back to Scotland to see my friends and family and my friend is a hairdresser. So I'm waiting to catch up with her and she's going to cut my hair as well. Fantastic. I'm going to be there. Nine o'clock Monday morning, knocking on the door. Let me in. I thought you meant you were going to be there with me. No. Like, oh, yeah. On Monday, two weeks early, just sat there waiting for you. See yeah. You. Oh, that little puppy dog <laughs> yes. out the window, waiting for me. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that was more meerkat that was than puppy dog. more rabbit and meerkat, we'll wasn't it? We'll yeah. go with that. Uh, Craig, though, a very special launch day coming up a little later today. Uh, myself and Debbie. And I know, Craig, how much you love these. Um, I managed to get a glimpse at them yesterday. Uh, and they're absolutely fantastic, aren't they? These are absolutely phenomenal. Now, wait until you see some of uh, what Nicole Bretherick has done within these ones here. So this is now all about layering up your stamps, hence the name on the screen. So you can then start to bring in all of your colours. You, within each set, what you're getting is a selection of different stamps. So instead of it being one great big stamp, you've got some small individual ones. And you can start to do your inking techniques. You can do your full bleaching. You can then start to do any of your masking techniques that we can see on these ones here and then you can go to town with depth and dimension by also adding the stamped images on the little elements that you're going to raise up so uh, straight away as Joe was saying these are what's coming up in launch day with Debbie and Joe so that is your crafters companion your layerable stamp collection so you're getting 51 elements in total 51 stamps in total and this is where you can get all of them if you're going to go for the main bundle for 39.95 for you guys stateside it's going to be 49.75 and even then with a the launch date we're even giving you that 15% off straight away so really good it actually works out that you buy five and you're going to get one set free so that's a really good way to look at it as well so I thought what we're going to do is I was inspired to buy one of the, the samples that Nicole had done so I'm going to take the swirly florals here now this is going to be the sort of projects where you can start to incorporate your water reactive your pigment and your quick dry all in one you know you don't have to you can just do your one ink technique uh, brand but you can then start to mix them up if you want so what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to go in and this is very very forgiving so what you don't need to do is be overly precise so what I mean by that is I've got a little bit of cardstock here and I'm going to go in with my let's go in with a little bit of pale fig here and I'm going to use my little finger daubers for these ones, Joe. You can be using the blending pads, but what I want to do is I, get, I want to get quite a light consistency on, on these. And what I don't want either is a real seamless blend. I really want to get that colour laid on, but I want to get textured looked with them. I want to get real squiff marks and I want to get... Squiff marks? Squiff is marks. Is that a technical term? Squiff marks. I think so anyway, I yeah. I think so, yeah. So you can see where the actual sponge pad has been. A bit more of like a, a cloudy effect as well. So what I'm doing with this one is laying the colour straight down. So we can see... Uh, Karen is saying on Facebook, she's saying, Joe, I love your shirt. Oh, yeah, I love that's your shirt. Nice. Thank you. Very Hawaiian style. Yeah, and, you a know, little bit Aztec maybe Aztec, as well. Aztec, that's it, yeah. I mean, I scream caveman at the best of times. Me, caveman, must... Knock wall. That's not what? Knock wall. 
<laughs> must not walk. Not must not must knock wall. Must knock wall. Down. Okay. Oh, down. Down. I didn't think they had walls. I well, just, in the cave, caves. I suppose the cave is still a wall, isn't yeah. it? If you knock the wall down, you'd be for it. Cave collapse. Well, that's true. What about that? Actually happened in that horror I watched the other night, which is oh, pointless. Gosh. Waste of time, but never mind. Uh, I am channeling, Fr I've came dressed as Fred Flintstone today. I think that's what it is. Is that what it is? Yeah. Is that, ah, uh, yeah, I can see that actually. Mm. I can see that. What I'm doing now is I'm flicking some water on because that was water reactive pale fig that I used there. Awesome. So I'm going to do that little bit of full bleaching effect and I'm going to bring in some of my kitchen towel just so that I can take away this excess water and what I would do as well is I would leave that a little bit longer so the longer you leave it the more the ink is pulled off so I'm going to take that one off here what I'm actually going to do as well let's even kind of highlight the corners so I would have done this first before I uh, spritz some of the water on but you know we're still going to get that build up of layers I'm going to go into the corner here and then what I'm going to do is go into the corner here and I'm going to go in with my finger and I'm going to smudge it and blend it in here and then into there as well because it's the water reactive you still got that movability whether you're using the sponge pad or your fingers so I've got that one there what I'm also going to do just briefly Joe is I'm going to go in and I'm going to dry it off because what I'm away to do in a minute is I'm away to come along with my pigment ink pads and embossing powder. Okay. And if I don't dry this off, because this is water reactive and I spritz with water, you'll still have some of the powder that'll stick to the water reactive ink. So I don't want that. So I want that to be nice and dry. So there'll be no, uh, no powder sticking to it. So let's make sure we give that a good dry. So that's coming along just fine. Connie says my shirt will fit perfectly in Tucson, Arizona. I wonder why. I mean, I'm all, I'm all for coming to Tucson, Arizona in this shirt, Connie. But is it, is it a style? Is that what it is? Maybe. Maybe, mm. yeah. Maybe it's how people dress in it, Tucson, It might Arizona. be. It might be, yeah. Mm. So when I was saying that this is very uh, free-flowing and forgiving and you don't need to be precise, I've got my background texture stamp here and this is just one of many of them that come on this one sheet, this swirly florals here. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to pop it onto my stamping platform, Joe. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay it direct onto my glass mat. Oh, Craig, I've never seen this done before. Never seen this done before? Nope. And I'm going direct with my card onto my stamp. And if I miss bits, I'm not uh, caring because we do want that perfect look. But, you know, it's quite good in itself. Nice. So then what I can do is I can come along now and I'm going to pour some of uh, my clear, I'm doing clear embossing powder here. So because I've dried it off before, what should hopefully happen is the powder will only stick to that midnight opaque pigment, which it looks like it has. Nice. We can then move that one out of the way just now. And then what I'm going to do with this one, Joe, is I'm going to heat this as well to melt the powder. Fantastic. Uh, people joining in and tuning, us, uh, tuning in and joining us from all over today. Uh, let's do some shout outs. Denise is in from Trinidad. Claudia in Indiana. Stephanie's with us in New Jersey. Kimberly is in North Carolina. Georgian in Clearwater. Rachel is in Brighton Beach, just outside Melbourne. Oh, I bet it's... Do you know what I was going to say? I bet it's warm there, but actually it's coming into the Australian winter now. That's Craig. right, So yeah. uh, not so much. Connie's in Tucson, Seal in Pennsylvania, Gail's in Houston, Texas, and Sharon's in Doncaster. Right across the globe, isn't All it? the way from every corner, Craig. Every corner of the globe. So good to see that. So good to see. It's good as well, and it's, it really is far and beyond. Not just the UK, the US, or Europe. You know, you've got all these far and beyond places. Love it. Um, so Trisha says, Joe, if you're Fred Flintstone, does that make Craig Barney Rubble? Could I do. I think it might. Might do, actually, yeah. It might do. Because it was Fred and Wilma and Barney and... Betty. Betty. I was going to say Felma, I don't know why. Um, and there was Bam Bam, wasn't there? I Bam think I'm more Bam. like Bam Bam. You are more of a Bam Bam. Or am I more like Pebbles? I think Johnny's more... Johnny would be more of a, a Barney. The length of my yeah. hair, I'd be able to be like pebbles and get it tied up. 
Who's, who is Pebbles? Remind me. Pebbles is Bum is um, Barney's daughter, is it not? Ah, okay. One of those. I feel like the Flint. So sometimes my my car, my no, uh, thank cars. Johnny. What was that? What was you laughing at there? I look like Dino the dinosaur, apparently. Dino the dinosaur. I often feel like you remember that that little monster that used to live where their bin was. He used to eat everything. That's what I feel like most of the time. What was that? Do you not remember in the film they had like the waste disposal and the waste disposal was like a little warthog that lived under the opening of the bin? That's what I feel like. Oh yeah, yeah, I know what you mean now. I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. Gosh. Oh. That's funny. That is funny, honestly. Google it after the show. Uh, should I, says Joe, you always forget the Canadians. If I, I, I can only read out the people that say hello, should I? I never forget the Canadians. Honestly, you're in my thoughts all the time. It was called a Pigasaurus. Now, if ever there was a spirit animal for me, I'm just putting it out there. Pigasaurus. Pigasaurus. That is pretty, uh, that's pretty fitting, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> They're having a good old chuckle in the gallery right now. They really, really are. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'll post a picture of a Pigasaurus yeah, to, to my uh, Facebook pro, my work, my work Facebook profile straight after this show. So you can have a good old chuckle at, at the Pigasaurus. Be good to see. Be good to see. So what I've done is I've done the same here in the two corners as I've done with that base layer that I've done. So I've gone in with a little bit of pink tulip and midnight water reactive. What I've also done, or not so much what I've also done, what I'm using, Joe, is I'm not actually using watercolour card that you may think. I'm, I've both, that one and that one, I've used white smooth cardstock. Oh, okay. So, you know, it's not the absolute best for your water techniques, but you can still use it because the other areas, once I'm finished, I want them to be dry. So that's why I've used the uh, smooth card. So what I'm going to do, once again, I'd leave that to dry a bit longer even naturally, but let's take some of that off. So we've got the speckles in each corner here. So then what I'm going to do, once again, let's just dry this off because I'm going to come along once again with some of the opaque pigment midnight ink pad and do some clear embossing. So Pebbles was Flintstone's daughter, Bam Bam was the rubble's adopted son. I'm glad we I got that was adopted, but yeah. That's right. It's been years since I've watched the Flintstones, 1994, actually. 1994 the film came out, Craig. That I is loved ages the, ago. I love it. I loved the first film. I know that they, they done, was it Return to Bedrock? Yes, the second love one. that. I love yeah. both of them. I thought they both were awesome. I did like both, but I, I really enjoyed the, uh, the, the first one the most. Enjoyed the first one. I actually watched that over the weekend. In fact, you know what, that's a good talking point, Craig. What was the first film that you can remember going to see at the cinema? There was a couple that I saw as a very young child. The first one I ever remember seeing, though, Craig, Toy Story, the original Toy Story. And it's mind-blowing. I went to the cinema. I only know that because I remember Flintstones being, the, I think, the second thing that I ever saw. Let me know in the comments what was the first film you recall seeing at the cinema um, Johnny's was either Aladdin or The Lion King, he's not sure which one came first. Do you remember, Craig? I do. It was when Disney re-released Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Okay. Um, and when I say re-released, re obviously they released it the first time around. Then, I don't know, it must have been about... Was it like an anniversary one, like 20 years yeah. after? Yeah. And they, they, they brought it back to the, the cinema at the time. I remember that. The second one was... Um, Free Willy. Remember going to oh, see Free Willy. Free Willy was an awesome film. Love yeah. that. Charlotte's was Tarzan. Charlotte is a little younger than the rest of us, uh, it's fair to say. When did Tarzan come out? Do we know? 1999. Yeah. Tarzan's a good, a good, uh, good film. Also, George of the Jungle. Very similar. Oh, brilliant that. film. Really good film as well. Love that. That's looking awesome, great. Love those corners. I bet you're going to find loads of different uses for those. Absolutely, you will do. You'll find lots of uses. And these ones I am using my stamping platform because I want to get them more in a specific area. But you could if you wanted to. If you weren't overly concerned about where you were wanting them, pop them onto your glass mat as well and just freehand stamp them. But I'll do this last one here. 
Then what I'm going to do is pop that one here and I dried that base layer first so that I'm not going to have any powder sticking. So we can go over the top. And once again, that was our Midnight Opaque Pigment Ink Pad. So let's pop this one to the side. And I'm guessing as well, Craig, you can use these in a... Uh, I mean, I'm loath to say, it's not quite mixed. It's kind of got a mixed media vibe to yes. it, isn't it, a lot of these projects. But you are also going to be able to use these regularly as you do all of your of other you stamps, can. I'm thinking, too. You can just do conventional black stamping with these if you wanted to. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe you've got a sentiment or a topper and you want an additional accent corner, then just use the stamps from in these, this set here or from one of the other sets. So yeah, please don't feel as though you have to do your building of layers to create, you know, a lovely looking effect. You can use them as standalone if you wish. So that's me got that layer here. So if I pop that to the side and then I've just got one last little bit to do. So let's bring in smooth card again and I'm going to bring in the sentiment that we've got within one of the sets. So I'm going to come down, let's do, I think I'm going to do about one one and a half by, let's do two and a quarter, I think. And then we're going to start to layer a few of these colours up like I have done as well. Gosh, lots, lots of comments coming in loads. about uh, films, isn't there? There we are indeed. Lots coming in. We'll share some of those with you in a few moments. We will do, yeah. Oh, Helen is saying the borrowers. Oh yeah, remember the borrowers. Mm. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Do you remember that? Yeah, that was a good film. Yeah. Great, great film. Really good. What's the, um, who are the people that lived in the shoe? Were they the borrowers? I'm thinking of something else. Is that not a song? A lady that lived in a shoe? Don't think so. Absolute stony silence on the floor and in the gallery there. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll have a think about that. There once was a lady who lived in a shoe. I don't know what the rest is. We'll find out soon. Here we go. So blend in this last couple in a real intensity of shade in here. Give this one last waft of heat so that I don't get any powder coming. Bugs Life, Claire is saying Bugs Life on Facebook. Yeah, that was a good one. Corbatel, Wizard of Oz. Mm. Yeah. When it all went from black and white to Technicolor. Yeah. Uh, I, wonder what, I wonder if John can remember what the first film was, was that he saw at the cinema. E.T. E John. Yeah, well, that's a great film. That is a really good one. Really good. Did like that. Nice that these uh, uh, you're utilising these on sort of smaller pieces, Craig. Now, not that you're going to use them on a necessary small project, but like, nice that you can work on like small elements at a time and then bring it all together. That's it. Yep. Just use all your small little bits of cardstock that you've got left over, uh, as you say, Joe, combine them together, layer them together. But if I go in now with my opaque midnight, and then I'm going to stamp my sentiment here. And then do you know what I'm also going to do as well? Let's, with the edge of the ink pad, I'm just dabbing very lightly. And then we can go in with our paper and powder. So we are going to get our powder. What did I do with it? Here it is. Clear embossing powder. So that'll stick to our sentiment and it'll also stick a little bit to the edges. Rachel, our social media superstar, hers is the same as mine, Toy Story 1. Toy Story 1. We must be a very similar age, Rachel. I've never seen the, the last Toy Story. No, Toy I mean Story either. 4. There's about 107 of them now, isn't there? <laughs> well, there's four. But... Right, OK. Um. I'll just smudge that with my finger, but I'm still going to go with it. It still wows me every time, this heat embossing technique, you know, Craig. Yeah. It never fails to, to blow my mind. No. Well, it's one of those techniques that I was saying last night, Joe, that it's one that actually got a lot of people into crafting. They see it and they think, oh my gosh, that's just phenomenal. So that's what's maybe bought, got them to buy an embossing set. So it is such a good uh, technique to do. So what I'm going to do is let's do this layer and of black behind it and then I'm going to finish it off by simply layering it together. Awesome. Right, shall I rattle through some of these Please films? Please do. Okay. Uh, Helen Moore, The Borrowers. Uh, what else we got here? Carrie Bambi in 1964 was the first thing she saw at the cinema. Uh, Claire Moore saying her first cinema film was A Bug's Life. 
Now this is my, uh, sorry, Corbatel said, saw the Wizard of Oz, remember gasping when the black and white changed to Technicolor. What a moment that must have been. Uh, Anne, one of my all-time favourite films of hers, uh, sorry, one of my all-time favourite films was her first film at cinema, was The Sound of Music. What a great film that is. Uh, Laura says, Gidget goes Hawaiian at the drive-in at 1959. I don't think I'm familiar with that one, Laura. Oh. Uh, Cara saying, honey, I shrunk the kids. Uh, Rachel, ha ha, Joe, no sh- Oh, okay, I can't read that out. Rachel's telling me how old she is. I'm not allowed to oh, tell right, you. Oh, right, okay. She's younger than me, though. Uh, Teresa says, uh, okay, really showing my age. First film I saw in a theatre was the original Lady and the Tramp. What a oh, great film. My favourite Disney film ever is Lady and the Tramp. Are there any films that involve crafting? There's a question for you. Uh, that are themed around crafting, have crafters in them. I know. I can't think of any off the top of my head. I, there was a Christmas film on Netflix last year, and there was a scene when they were in sort of like a library, and in the backdrop they had a load of Anna Griffin products. Ah. Um, See, I think crafters generally are underrepresented in films. I'm going to put it out there, Craig. I wonder who would play me as a crafter. I've always, I've always liked the idea of Tom Hanks playing me. I think it would be, hmm, Robin Williams, but in the style of Miss Doubtfire. He's dead. Well, I mean, hypothetically. All I don't right. think there were, I mean, I love the fact that we're talking about a film about your life and the, the biggest problem is that the actor is dead. <laughs> so maybe we're more aware of Okay, they have to be alive. <laughs> you know, he's... I can keep wishing, can't I? You can indeed. I don't know who would play me. Rob Beckett, probably. <laughs> Paul O'Grady? No. I'm not that old. Goodness. He's not that old. Well, he's he, older uh, than you. He's in his 70s. Is he 70 now, is he? Yeah. Gosh. Yeah, I get the Rob Beckett comparison a lot. It's do not you? one that I'm fond of, Craig, I must say. No. Uh, yes. I do. Rob Beckett, for anyone in the US, is a uh, a comedian from Essex, which is kind of the, is from around my area, but it's not a, it's not a compliment. No, let's put it that way. Uh, Terry Tom says sweet sweet six ah sweet sixteen. That film, she sews her own dress. Apparently, in that film, there you okay. go. Okay, yeah. There's a lot of fashion ones, isn't there, Craig? You know, if yes. you talk about soft crafting, there's a lot of fashion ones, I guess. Love Devil Wears Prada. Maybe. Oh, yeah, I had a f- story about that. I was watching it on a plane, Craig, and then we came to land with 20 minutes to go and I never saw the ending. Still not seen the ending. Have you still never seen it? Oh, I've never seen, seen it, it about 40 million times. Still never seen it. I but yeah, maybe we need to work on a... Maybe we need to pitch to a Hollywood um, studio the idea for a film all about crafting. Maybe it can be centred around Crafter's Companion and Crafter's TV. It's an idea. Yeah. I like that It thought. could be called The Devil Wears Decoupage. De- Devil Wears Decoupage. Good one, isn't it? Really good. Like I that love idea. that, Craig. But what a really that classy one. project that is. So it's layering up. So it's layering up water reactive. It's wearing, uh, layering up a pigment. It's also quick dry. Use the blues as well. But we've done some spritzing. We've done heat embossing as well. That's just one set that you can be uh, playing with. Keeping in mind that you do get six sets. It works out that you buy five, you get one free. That's coming up later on in the day with Debbie and Joe on launch day. If you do go for that full set, you're going to be getting them for thirty nine ninety five here in the UK. For you guys, dollars, you're going to be getting them for forty nine seventy five. All going to be getting that 15% off. Everyone that is in Club Inspire, depending on which level you are on, you'll all get your Club Inspire discount as well. All you need to do, and I do always urge you, especially on a launch day, is to check out your baskets. Because uh, I think going by uh, the popularity that people have seen pictures-wise on social media, I think they're going to be uber, uber good. And I can't wait to see what Debbie does. So do tune in uh, 3 p.m. here in the UK or for you guys stateside. It is, of course, 10 a.m. Eastern time, 7 a.m. Pacific time, Joe. Absolutely, it is. Be there or be square. Luanne rightly points out that in Ghost, they were spinning pottery, Craig. Good point. 
Pop is that yeah. sorry? In Go the film Ghost, they oh, were yeah. spinning pottery. That's right. Yeah. There you are. Right, I want to move on to these adorable topper decks that we've got for you. These are awesome. Now, in each one of these, you get 54 toppers. They're kind of like a, uh, a cross between a topper and an ATC, I guess. Uh, they are this card shape, and I think they're going to be wonderful for little notelets. Uh, of course, if you want to um, pop these onto smaller cards as toppers, you are going to be able to. You've got lots of different imagery uh, and designs in here, which is fantastic. They've got a lovely uh, shiny finish on these ones. So these ones here, the green ones that I've just shared with you, the, um, the um, animal themed ones, they are 300 GSM. And then you've got these, I'm gonna have to show you these. Look, these are awesome. They're like a sort of vintage uh, collection that you've got and here. You've got old cars. Uh, you've got the Empress of Britain there. Uh, the Bristolian Express. What else we got in here? The Sovereign of the Seas. Uh, these would work brilliantly, I think, on scrapbook pages, especially like travel uh, scrapbook pages, historical uh, scrapbook pages. They are also uh, gonna be great for more masculine themes too. I just think they're really fun. And the great thing is uh, they are uh, three pounds 99 so 399 each you can either go for the planes trains and automobiles the planes trains and automobiles limited stock on that one which is those ones just there or your other option is of course return to the midnight garden which is awesome now did we we had some midnight garden items on very recently from hunky dory didn't we three quarters gone on that one by the way so if you've got the other midnight garden items they might be an awesome one for you to go for as well. Uh, Karen saying, fabulous card, Craig. Fran says, Joe, you are so funny. I try, Fran. I'm glad I raised a smile. Uh, Jackie says, very happy this morning as I've received a parcel from Crafters Companion. I'm now playing with the shaped pop-out craft kit. Oh, that sounds absolutely uh, awesome. Don't forget, all of the craft folk deals are all from the big brand Funky Dory today, but they are all very low stock. So if you want them, Pop yourself over to the website, click that Shop the Show button uh, and have a look at everything that is there for you. But I believe Craig is going to preview something else that's coming up today for us. I am indeed. We're going to be having a look at what's coming up in Cartload. So that's going to be 7pm here in the UK, but for you guys stateside, it's going to be 2pm Eastern Time, 11am Pacific Time. And this is all about our Nature Garden Peacock Collection. So we've got quite a nice uh, uh, larger bundle this time round when it comes to the Peacock Collection. So I thought what we can do is we can do uh, get a little bit creative within this one here. Because what you've got is you've got your 3D embossing folder, you've got your corner dies, as well. Tell you what we can do is let's just show you a few uh, finished samples before we do a little bit of crafting here. So this one is uh, using some uh, vellum on the background with the embossing folder and then use the corner dies. These ones here be in the corner dies as well with the embossing folder on the back. Maybe you want to start to incorporate that large regal frame that we've got here. Create your own theatre cards if you want. This one here is using the peacock die that you get within the set, as well as that large oval frame. And then let's go maybe into a little bit of a concept card where you've got your peacock as well. You can stamp, cut out, and then we've got sentiments as well. Still got additional folders within the set, but I thought what we could do is we still have a smidgen left of Hunky Dory's Eastern Wishes that we had the other day. Now, if you've seen them, you'll have seen that incredible paper and parchment that you get. It's got the peacock effect uh, back direct backgrounds for them. So I thought, why not start to incorporate them as well? So what I've done is I've kind of got a couple of options here to show you. I've taken some of our Pacific Centura Peril. So I've created my own 8x8 card blank seven and three quarters and then we can take one of the double-sided papers that are in the eastern wishes double-sided paper slash insert bundle and we can have the peacock feathers as the background or we can go for this bluey white tone what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this tone because i'm also bringing in one of the vellums from the collection nice. that's got the peacock feathers all the way out so what we can do is let's layer these ones up so i'm going to use this layer here and then we can pop this one on helen moore on youtube is saying i keep looking at the peacock collection i love the patterns 
really is a good one that if you've not got it this is the best price yet gosh i've just seen how much it is for all of those elements mm -hmm. all of that yeah i know flabber is ghasted craig and that's i didn't even show you elements of the 3d embossing folder that we're away to do in a moment and honestly you could knock me over with a peacock feather i bet you could i'm not surprised you can see that 3d embossing folder 2d large outer frame then the bottom left you've got your sentiments going into your peacock stamps then your large peacock die and then your corner die on the bottom right hand side all of that with that price there shut the front door i know on that i know really really good for that one what I'm then going to do is this layer is watercolour card. Now I've already gone around it with a little bit of the ocean blue water reactive. But what I want to do is I will tell you it's four and three quarters by six and three quarters. And I've gone a bit of glitter card, quarter of an inch bigger. Oh, that is gorgeous glitter card. Really nice, isn't it? It's just from our glitter pack set. And another bit of the um, Pacific. And I've layered that one up. And the reason I'm showing you that now and that layer is five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Because I'm going to do what I like to uh, show you to hide the workings of the adhesive when it comes to parchment. So I've got my parchment where I want it. It's not stuck down yet, but I've got it where I want it. So I'm going to go in with my main layer first. And then what I'm going to do is put my adhesive on. Let's bring this back in. Get this exactly where we want it. And... What I'm going to do is come in now, layer it on top, in the middle. Now I'm doing it so it's a, it's a straight, straight line. You could do it at a jaunty angle if you want. But now it means I know where I can pop my adhesive without it being seen. So I can come all the way around. Alternatively, if you don't want to pretend, you know, really we're wasting all of this parchment here. So what you could have done is just cut a couple of strips and ran them down the side. So that's an option for you. We're going to lay this back on here. And then we can start to do a little bit of embossing just in a second. So uh, Lisa, uh, sorry, Debbie, M Debbie Mahan says, uh, in the movie Trolls, the main troll is a scrapbooker apparently. All right, okay. Mm. So oh, there you go. That's uh, a, uh, a cr someone that crafts it in a film, which is great. Um, also, Lisa says, Craig and Joe, you are my favourite pair to watch on Crafters TV. I always laugh and it brightens my day. How I nice was just is that? reading that myself yeah, as well. It's lovely. lovely. Really is lovely. It's nice to see those, uh, see those comments. It'd be nice when you get out and meet people again, wouldn't it, Craig? Oh, you know, like wait. trade shows and... Craftaganza and all Imagine those. Imagine when we can do all them again, eh? Oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be heaven, isn't it? It really it's will going be. To be. I wonder what is. What's the first thing you guys at home are going to do once once we've got that complete freedom? You know, you're going to go out and you know hug. I know most of us are going to hug our family and friends, but you know, is there something specifically you want to do? Go for a specific meal? Maybe you want to go somewhere specific? What is it you're going to do? I'm going to go somewhere very warm uh, and ride a scooter around along a coastline and stop and eat, consume my own body weight in ice cream and eat lots of lovely food preferably in italy or croatia that yeah would be the first thing i do that sounds good i like the thought of that one what are you going to do sure. craig i don't i just don't know i don't know it's, it's kind of that you know when the opportunity presents itself and you just there's so many things so that many you things. want to do that you've not been able to do for over a year now are we all in the same boat as well where we have so many plans now for the end of the year we've sort of made so many plans and now not sure how you're going to get all those plans in yeah that's where i'm at or how we're going to afford them all as well just plan so much for the second part of the year that's it it's making uh, making most of everything that we've missed out on isn't it absolutely so it will be but good. also i think there'll be a lot of things that we don't take for granted anymore as well yeah that maybe we did before that's it yeah just the the freedom of just being able to nip out you know, simply being able to nip out without feeling like you've been watched or something that you can't do. Not Normal. long now, Craig. Not, Not long, long now. now. Not long now.
So what I've done is I've taken this corner die. Now I've taken a bit of blue card. This was originally from the Peacock set. However, as I've showed you before, you could be using some of the cardstock or papers that you got within the Eastern Wishes or maybe some of the other ones from your collections at home. And I'm going to cut two of these. So running these ones through. Helen on YouTube is saying, up to the lakes, need to tick off more mountains. That sounds really good. Sounds like she's going to make them cross though. Tick it off does, the yeah. I'm going yeah. to tick them off. I know. <laughs> Sounds like you're going to tell them off. Yeah, just up to the mountains and the hills and the lake district or just the lakes in general. Nice. Diana's saying we're going to celebrate our 50th wedding anniversary with a trip to Maine because on the la on the, that day last year we had to stay home. <gasps> is Maine where you get is Maine lobster a thing or have I made that up? Is Let me know. What? Let me know, Diana. Maine. Uh, I feel like you get like lots of lobster and seafood from Maine. I, I could be talking nonsense, and I could have it confused with somewhere else. Samantha's looking forward to a simple pub lunch. Uh, Caroline is going to go off to uh, see her family, and she's going to take the train. Nice. Nice. I love travelling on the train. You know. I right? do. Mm. I do. There's something quite nice about it. When all this isn't going on in the world, when I, I do go home to see my family and friends, usually I will get the train. Do you know what I think it is about the train that I love so much is it's quite nostalgic. Mm -hmm. As in where, like yeah. with cars, for instance, cars are a relatively new uh, invention or, you know, the widespread use of them. Whereas I think people have been taking the trains for hundreds of years, Craig. Yeah. It makes me quite whimsical. I like it. Yeah, I see what you mean in that way. I see what you mean. It's just nice to actually... Uh, and it feels like you're going on a holiday as well. Feels like you've been away. And yeah, absolutely, Johnny. If you go on the train going home to Scotland, you get some really cracking sights for sure. Erin has uh, confirmed Maine lobster is from Maine. I, I, I'm so pleased. I know I, I'm fluent in food globally, you know, Craig. I can pretty much order in any country. I can't say hello to any other stuff, but yeah, fluent in food. Uh, Diana agreeing, yes. Uh, Terry Tom says, once uh, they open up completely, my son will be able to come for a visit and we'll get to meet his girlfriend for the first time. He's currently oh. in Germany in the army. Oh, well, I hope he's safe and well, Terry Tom. I read that at first and thought that said that my son will be able to meet his girlfriend for the first time. And I had a lot of questions, but you're going to meet his girlfriend for the first time. That'll be awesome. Stephanie says, hubby wants to go to Barbados. Oh, yes. Loving that. Yeah, I, I think and maybe as well get look to get... New York booked again. Yes, well, I've got lots of birthdays to celebrate. So it's my brother's 30th birthday last year in lockdown. Uh, it was my mum's 60th birthday this year in January in lockdown. And this year, it's also my dad's 60th birthday in September. No, so it's my mum's 60th birthday in January. It's my dad's 60th birthday in September, right. uh, a few days after mine. So hopefully at the end of the year, we'll have a big seller, a big sort of three-way celebration to a 30th and two 60th somewhere lovely. That'd be good, yeah. That'd be nice. Really nice. I think ultimately, like everyone as well, I'm just looking forward to just getting home. Absolutely. Uh, Nicole says, my mum and I are going to Cape Cod in June to see a family friend. So excited. I always get Cape Cod confused with the southern tip of uh, Africa, which is something else. I think it's called Cape Horn, is it? Uh, yeah, they're, well, they're very, sure. very different. Hmm. Not sure at all. I've heard of it before. I have heard of it before. I'm not sure exactly what, what one I'm gonna is to get to, mixed I'm, up with. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Google, Craig. Googling. See what it is. Not Cape Verde, Johnny. No, that's an island uh, in the Atlantic Ocean, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. So I've layered all these different colours. So I've done a bit of Spring Meadow. I've done a bit of Oasis and Midnight. And what was that other one? Pink Tulip as well. Awesome. Layered them up so that we get that peacock coming through. If you want to go over with a little bit of silver gilding wax, you can. I'm not. And I'm going to lay my adhesive on. But what I'm going to do as well, Joe, because I'm going to go on a glitter card, what I'm going to do is put some of our tacky glue all over around in the back. That can go into place here. So let's press that one down. And then we can start to layer this one up as well as the two corners that we've cut. Fantastic. Do you know the uh, texture on it? It's got a bit of an ostrich leather feel to it as well. Yeah. You know those textural bits? Yeah. The, but these ones? 
Uh, no, the ones on the peacock, uh, fed plumage. This bit? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I can see that now, mm. yeah. I see exactly what you mean. Cape Horn is not in Africa. Cape Horn is at the southern tip of Chile, apparently. Someone will let us know what the cape at the bottom of Africa is called. I, I, can, I can sense it, Johnny. I can feel someone typing it right now. Our uh, crafters know everything, Craig. They do. They are a, an absolute plethora of knowledge. They know absolutely everything. Forever in doubt, you know, it doesn't need to be in and crafty. It can be just anything in general. Um, Mary's just asking, she just had to nip away for a second. What ink pads did you use there for that project, Craig? So I used the Oasis Midnight and a bit of Parakeet. I used Spring Meadow and Pink Tulip. And it was the water reactive, was water it? Water reactive, awesome. yeah. Water reactive, so we can blend that bit of colour out. And I'm going in with the corners here. I'm not putting a lot of adhesive, certainly in this middle bit. Because what I want is I want to kind of have it that little bit of a free flow and action and movement within the middle. But you could then come along and you could start to add maybe some sentiments that are within the set if you want to. But I'm going to add a pearl in each corner. These are from the Diamond Sparkles. So all that I'm going to do, like I say, I would still add a sentiment right along the middle. But I want to make a real spring-like, vibrant looking card when it comes to the peacocks. I've got it, Craig. It's come to me. It's the Cape of Good Hope. Cape of Good all Hope. Right, okay. Yeah, which is awesome. Sounds like something a superhero would wear. It does, Cape doesn't of good it? Hope. Yeah, like it a does. really cheery, positive superhero. Uh, lots of you are chatting away. A lot of excitement for that deal. Johnny, are you, like me, maybe a bit concerned of how much we'll have left of that by the time we get uh, to the cartload show? Johnny is just checking, but I think if you're looking at that and thinking, do you know what, uh, it was maybe a bit of a stretch for you, the whole collection. This is a really good, succinct collection of the Nature's Garden Peacock, but at a fantastic price. So, uh, oh, Johnny is a bit, Johnny is a bit concerned. So, uh, he's not sure that will still be here a little later at seven o'clock. Now, let's have another look at that Throwback Thursday picture. Who, what are you getting? I'd love to know. Uh, let me know who you think this is from our team here at Crafters TV. Uh, and let me know in the comments. I would love to know who you think it is. Um, oh, Nicole says, actually, maybe it's not the Cape of Good Hope. She believes Cape Agulhas is the southernmost point of Af Africa. Oh. Who knows? There's division in the comments. Uh, right, let's uh, share with you a great collection that we've got on these little books. Little books are awesome because they are 144 pages in each. And what's great is they are toppers that are ready to go. Sometimes they are whole toppers. Sometimes they are toppers that you can cut into and fussy cut or use your paper trimmers on, or maybe you've got decoupage elements in there, but they're really awesome books that are going to inspire you. Matt and layer that up, and you've got a fantastic start uh, of a card, which is awesome. This one's called Promises that we've got here. So this is one you'll get included, but you're actually getting two of them. You are also going to receive in here, this one here, which is the florals too, which is your flourishing florals. Now ours has had a bit of a hard time. I think it's been thrown around a bit, but what you've got again is 144 pages of incredible floral imagery within there. The nice thing about these as well is that you get six of each image uh, and there's 24 images. And I know Craig, you love decoupaging these up these, don't you? I do. I really do. I love to just sit, just fussy cut, you know, fussy cut um, till my heart's content. Little bits, larger bits. There's lots of different ways in which you can use them, Joe, when it comes to doing the fussy cutting. Absolutely. And if you want to pick those up as a Club Inspire Platinum member, you can 1278 or 1854 uh, to get your hands on those. I think, uh, I, I don't know if we were, we were saying, or maybe we won't demonstrate these, maybe we were on Craig was like, oh no, absolutely, are these please, I want to demonstrate them. So who am I to stand in your way, Craig? Uh, absolutely. And then just to answer Mandy's uh, question, uh, I did pick up on this at the start of the uh, peacock demo but that uh, paper that I used is from Hunky Dory's Eastern Wishes uh, so the one that I used in the start of the peacock collection is from Eastern Wishes. Awesome. But let's go in and have a look so what I've done is I've taken a couple of bits of adorable scorable from the acorn wood set so I've got uh, a piece of the white. I want to call it acorn antiques which is something completely different. Yeah yeah yeah. Acorn antiques is a um a 
Victoria Wood comedy. Yeah. Now, that's a funny one, because the other day, funny enough, talking about Eastern Wishes, you were saying Eastern Promise. That I get, but yeah, Acorn Wood to Acorn Antique. Because it's it. Acorn Wood, it's Acorn Antiques and Victoria Wood. So the right. two things in my head, it's, it's a double-edged sword, Craig. Got ya. I see now, that makes sense. That makes sense. There's a right mixed bag on the guesses for the Throwback for Friday, Craig. It's no, our, throwback, throwback Thursday. Thursday. It's because I say Thursday with an F because I'm common, Craig, so therefore it, it works as Throwback Friday or Throwback Thursday. It doesn't matter, does it? Uh, we've got some guesses. Becky, uh, Kimberly thinks it's Debbie Robinson, Teresa thinks it's Bernie, Brenda thinks it's Debbie Fisher, and Christine thinks it's Leanne Chivers. So we've got one of everyone right, so far. Real big Let me know right in the comments. the board. Be interesting to see you. Real big mix there. So what I've done is I've created my own little card blank. So it's five and a half by four and three quarters. And what I've also done is I've matte and layered. So this is one of them that I've taken from the promise and I've matte and layered white onto the peach. And what I've done is I've got my adhesive only along the bottom here because what I want to do is I want to have this so that it is sticking up towards the top. So I'm just making sure I can see where or feel where the D's of it is. So let's move it down slightly. So if I bring this one back in and I'm going to layer this first one on. And as Joe, you were saying, you know, you can fussy cut and decoupage them that I like to do, or you can use your nesting dies and layer them up that way. So you create sort of like a pyramid effect, or you can do a pyramid effect using your guillotine. So I've got a few more. Now, I'm not maybe going to use them all, but at least I've got all the other ones, the identical ones. So what I'm going to do now is if I take one of them and I'm going to probably, let me just have a look to start with, is I'm going to chop off a quarter, uh, no, I'm not, half an inch off of each corner. Okay. So, or off of each side. So half an inch and half an inch. I'm going to do the same half an inch and then half an inch. So that's given me that one there. So then this time I'm going to take another one and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off three quarters of an inch off of each one. So I'm making it slightly smaller. So three quarters and then three quarters. I'm going to do the same three quarters and then three quarters so we've got a smaller one and then I'll do one more let's take uh, an inch off so one inch one inch here we're going to do an inch at this side and then an inch from here so I've got all these little bits. I can then start to fussy cut little bits out of these ones here so I'm not wasting them. I can tuck them into my card or projects. But if I bring these back into place here, and then if I go to this one, because we cut them off at the exact same measurement all the way around, we can then go in with our larger pads. So let's pop a couple there. Let's do a few here and then last but not least what we're going to do is let's do some more on this one smaller ones here so let's just do a few and then we're going to layer these ones back up on top of each other so let's come back in with this one so if I layer them up now directly over the top so if we, I'm trying to pinpoint an area, so I'm going to have a look at this little bit here and overlap it. Let's bring it a bit further to me. Overlap it and then I'm matching up. Just to let everyone know, the throwback Thursday, the two pictures are of the same person, Craig. They are, A little bit of confusion they? in the comments. They are yeah. of the same person. I, I did pick that up as well at the start as well. I wasn't sure if it was the same, but it is, it absolutely is. So uh, just as well we pointed that one out. And then here we go. So now that I have chopped off the same measurements all the way round, what we've got is we've got a symmetrical layer building up in a pyramid effect into the centre of our card. 
So let's take this last one. So if I come in and layer that one there, there, and there. So we've got the original image, but what we've got is a real paramount effect. And then what I've done is I've taken one of our sentiment uh, fancy font dies, and I've cut this, this kind of green, this is actually from one of the, the first adorable scorables that you were showing at the oh, start yes, of the, the show. Oh yes, the lace. So it's from the lace there, and a little bit of black on the back. And then what I'm going to do, into the centre of that sentiment here, what I can do is I can come along and I'm going to pop that one into the middle. Then I would add maybe a few gems or a couple of uh, little bows or something. But then there we go. It's a really nice way in which you can use your little books. So if I turn it to the side, you can see how you've got that paramount effect, that 3D effect, but a different way. So either using your nest and dice or fussy cut, or that's a nice way in which you can use them as well. Awesome. Uh, Hadassah says, love how pretty the little books are. Shudaya says she's got loads of them. They make great collections and awesome cards. Uh, and Mary Knoll saying that is gorgeous. Love all those layers, Craig. Uh, and that's a brilliant demonstration, Craig. It's not a way you'd maybe necessarily think about using a little book. No. It just shows you how versatile they are. Now I've got some awesome Mattastic cardstock for you available. Uh, we've got the acorn wood bunnies. 80% of this, though, has sold out and gone. You've got a lo lovely selection of muted sort of lilacs and natural tones in here. So that's the first one that you are receiving. What you are also getting in there as well is this collection just here, which is your Spring Meadow too. So you're gonna get both of these. Really lovely, again, a lovely selection of um, colors on a matastic, adorable, scorable too, which is brilliant. So uh, you've got, again, just checking the weight on that. I believe it is 350 GSM again, but because it's matastic, you've got that bendy ink technology, but it means that you can also ink it if you want to, uh, you can stamp on it. So it is truly really, really versatile, which is awesome. And the other great thing is 48 sheets there for that price that you can see in screen, 15.98 or 23.98 if you are across in the US. Also, Platinum members, 1278 or 1918, if you want to get your hands on that one, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, and Craig, uh, you, I mean, you just can't have too much gorgeous cardstock in your stash, really, can you? No, you can't. You absolutely cannot. You know, and especially with it being uh, Hunky Dory's cardstock, being the adorable, scorable cardstock, whether you use it with Hunky Dory's uh, products, our products, or just as a standalone, absolutely perfect for being in your stash. So what I've done is I've got a few sheets already, so a bit of these, kind of like the lilac, the mint, the ivory, baby blue, and a bit of the pinky colour, pinky peach colour. And what I've also done, I've also taken a bit of the brown. So the brown I have cut to seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. This is a piece of the white, and I've cut this to seven by seven. So what I'm then away to do is let's bring in our guillotine here, and let's cut some strips. So I'm going to cut some strips at about half an inch all the way down so i'm going to do one of each and this is following on from the idea was it the other day or last week when i done a card using scraps of cards yeah uh, cardstock and you guys at home absolutely loved it so i thought this is another way to show you how instead of using your cardstock or adorable scorable with your toppers or your little books how you can then easily create a really nice card whether it's going to be small or whether it's going to be a large one like i'm away to do now one sentiment that's all that you need to make a really appealing card so there it is, that's all the strips that I'm doing. So let's move that out of the way now. And uh, what I can do is bring our main base layer in first and foremost. So we're going to arrange them. So let's go, let's kind of go green, blue, let's go lilac, ivory and pinky. And then I'm going to add my adhesive all the way along the back. And it is bigger than my cardstock, which is fine because we'll trim it afterwards. And what I'm doing is I am just lining it up onto my glass mat, Joe, because I want to make sure I at least get the first one straight. So I'm lining up the green one first. So if I line this one, and although I'm making this straight from the card uh, stock itself, chopping it up, if you've got little slithers 
and they don't all have to be quarter of an inch. You know, you might have some that's uh, odd sizes, you know, an eighth of an inch or little slithers. Use any of these leftover bits and they might not be as long as what I've got here. But in that case, just make your card base smaller. It could be four by four or eight by eight. Work around what you've got left. So I'm going to go in with this last one. So we can pop this one in here. So now that I've got my strips done, and I don't know if you've noticed, I've got five of them, always pleasing with the eye. So whether it's three or five or seven or nine, odd numbers work well. So trim that. So we're trimming these bits, so either with your scissors or your guillotine, whatever uh, you feel easiest at using. And then what I can do, I'm going to take that out of the way. If I go onto the back and I'm going to pop my adhesive all the way around. And this one, once again, was seven by seven. I've got my brown in, and these are all matte-tastic. So you could start to add additional colour if you want, or stamp additional sentiments if you want. But let's pop that one on. And then I've layered this base layer with pads. So if we take these ones off, you might want to keep it flat, which is entirely up to yourself. We can then come back again with another one of our fancy font sentiments. Bring in my card blank. Let's pop that one into the middle. Press it into place. Let's bring in Happy, which I've cut within that same brown cardstock. And then I'm going to use my tacky glue for this one. So let's go round, covering it up, either your sprays, dotty tape runners, whatever you feel comfortable using. But I want to lay that down. And then have a play with the positioning of where you want to put your sentiment. So we could do overlapping it, or I like the thought, actually that's going to be a perfect fit. If I pop it straight into here, Oh, now, if you made to measure. The tacky, it is actually, isn't it? The tacky glue will dry clear, so you don't need to worry about that. I'm just dabbing any of that excess off on my hands. But Joe, that's all that I'm doing. That's a great card. I love that, I love that Craig. Really that's awesome. all that I'm doing. You could, if you wanted to, maybe add a little uh, die-cut circles or gems or pearls into the corner, but that is it. Nothing more. So although that I've cut them straight from the cardstock, that could of course be excess strips that you've got or uh, different bits of lengths that you've got. Do eight by eight that I've got here. Make it smaller if you want. Maybe incorporate other dies or sentiments from your stamps, but really, really simple, but potentially, possibly one of the most effective cards as well. Mm, absolutely. Uh, Rosalyn loves to use this technique on scrapbook layouts, she says. Uh, and Julie Barlow says, what a good idea for using up scraps. It is indeed, if you want to go for it, Remember, you've got 24 sheets of the bunnies and you've also then got 24 sheets there of the Spring Meadow too. Matastic and adorable scorable and really lovely weight. Perfect actually for things like construction if you want to use those for that. Uh, don't miss out on them. Uh, was it 80% gone on those, Johnny? 80% of the stock on those has gone. In fact, if they're in your basket, I will urge you to, uh, to check those out. Rhonda says, if you put the strips on a piece of copy paper first, you can emboss it and then put it on the topper. Saw it on Instagram, Craig. Another great way of using the same technique, maybe. Say that again. Uh, Rhonda says, uh, another thing that she likes to do with that technique, which you saw on Instagram, is to attach the strips onto copy paper first, emboss the strips, and then pop the... So, like, create a topper with the strips, emboss that, and then put that on the card blank. Do you know what I mean? No. So I'm, going to, I'm going to go back and have a look at you. Yeah. Take your strips, yeah. rather than sticking your strips onto your card blank, yep. stick them onto a piece of copy paper, yep. take the card strips and the copy paper, emboss that, then trim that down and then pop that onto your card. So you'd have the strips and then the strips are also embossed with the same emboss across all of the strips. Okay, got you now. Got it? Got you now. Awesome. Got you now, got you now. Yep, got there in the end. Doesn't take long, does it? <sighs> Okay, I was, okay, I was kind of distracted having a look at all these as well. This is what's coming up on Cartload, and this is our Totally Tiffany. This is the ultimate buddy bag uh, kit. So this is where you're going to also be getting the free purple Lotus. Lotus? Lotus? Lois. 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 Like Superman's uh, girlfriend. I've never watched it. Oh, I love um, Superman. I know who she Lois is. Lois Lane. Yeah, I, yeah, that's right. I know who she is, actually, yeah, but I've never, can you believe it? I've never seen, never seen Superman. What do you like? Yeah. 
Never seen it. John, you've blown John's mind that you've not seen Superman. He's going to bring you in all his VHSs. Mm, oh, there you go. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good, maybe one day. Why watch a film that's all about me? You know. Yeah, I will do, Charlotte, thanks. Here we go, let's have a look, Cartload. 7 p.m. here in the UK, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time. This is our Totally Tiffany, the ultimate buddy bag. So we can see everything that I'm away to show you. 55.92 here in the UK, $70.42 for you guys stateside. We have got the phenomenal storage selection here. Now, just to say as well, you won't get what is in these uh, bags, but it's to show you how you can be storing them all. So let's go in with this one here. So this one is the Leanne. So let's go in. Now you can, of course, be using your sprays if you want to hold your sprays in. You could be using all of your glitters to uh, pop it into place here. Using them for uh, maybe your little uh, pearl uh, little powders that we can see as well. Maybe even these ones are good for your ribbon reels, your big ribbon reels that you can uh, pop into place if you want. You've got your Velcro straps, really, really good Velcro straps all the way around. You've also got these real sturdy bases as well as the back, and then you've got a real strong handle as well. So that's these ones here. So within this one here, this one now is Stephanie. So Stephanie, you can either use it as one, or what you can do is use it with these compartments that you get as well. Now keep in mind, you still don't get what's inside, but you do get these little compartments. So either use it as an actual empty storage for larger items, or you maybe want to pop your ink pads or any of your little paints or pastes or that into the middle. Good because you've got the little fingers that you can just pop it in and then pull it out. Or if you again, once again, got larger reels of ribbon, pop them in or maybe wool and then just feed the end out and then you can just pull as much out that you need at a time. So that is a good one for that sort of uh, craftiness that you've got. Then on this one, we've got the Deborah here. Really nice one, so little carry case. Really good uh, sturdy Velcro for this one once again, like the others. Not just on the front, you've got the Velcro at each side. But then what you can do is you can store maybe your classic pens, your aqua pens if you want. You don't have to, you can do anything else as well that would fit in to the aperture of the middle. You've got the little sturdy holder as well in place, so it's not going to flop on its own. You've got that to uh, stabilise it. So what we can do is pop them ones back into place. Remember, this is what all comes included. Showing you all of these. Then we've got this one here, which is uh, middle on this one here. So although that we've got cotton reels and we've got uh, fabrics in these ones, which you absolutely can do, you've got that more shallow base that you can uh, maybe pop your shallow embossing powders in. This is what I mean by the incredible Velcro strap that you've got. So if I then open each side, we can see that we've still got a real sturdy base at the bottom. So we're not just leaving you with the actual storage where you've got that wipeable plastic. What we've got, we've given you the ability to actually lift them out as well. So maybe your twine, your cotton, maybe any of your additional fabrics that you've got at home. Maybe you want to store your uh, tools. So the ones that you maybe use on a daily basis, they can sit in here at the side of your desk. Or what you could also do, if I bring a few of mine, I've got one in, but if you like to use your blending tools, so you could fold them over, pop them in, or if you like to use them and store them on your desk, have them standing upright that we can see here, and you're going to get quite a few side by side. So although the lid won't potentially close once they're all in, it's a good way to have your blending pads sitting and uh, stored to the side when you need. Then we're even giving you this one, so Shelley, so perfect for, as you can see, your gilding waxes. So either this size, doesn't have to be, it could be your paintbrushes maybe, real good size so you can be laying down your paintbrushes. So you can see, once again, we've got that tray that you can hold it all in nicely and neatly and just uh, lift it out if you need. Really, really good in the fact that it wipes clean, so you don't need to worry about spilling anything. 
Then what we've got is our next one, which is Irene. So come on, Irene. This is going to be a good one for your blending pads as well, like I showed you a minute ago. But you could be popping anything inside of them. What about if you're a new mum or dad and you want to be able to take, you know, any of the, the baby uh, needs out, you know, the wipes or nappies or anything like that under the pram or buggy, that's going to be good. Also be water, it's not going to be completely waterproof in the fact, you know, water can still potentially get under, but you can see how, because these fold over the edges, if you're going to get a shower of rain or water, it's going to be well protected. So you know that you're going to be absolutely fine in that way. But being black, it could be for many, any of your tools. If you've got your uh, workshop out the back, you know, any of your tools, cooking equipment, if you're a, a cook or a chef, any of these tools that you need to hold, certainly with Irene that you're able to pop them in. You've got your foam pads there as well. And then we're also giving you this one here. So within this one here, which is called Karen, nice one for, I would use this for my nesting dies because you've got that nice slope. You've got them that are going to be staggered out that you can see how it would look here. But once again, maybe in the kitchen, if you're then taking out the center part here, maybe your index or your recipe cards be wiped clean as well. Nice way to actually uh, hold them up. But then what you've got is you've got your large Lois as well. So this is one that I use time and time again. I've got the black one, so I bring all my bits and pieces into daily basis. But maybe you need to go out for a food shop or treat yourself when the shops are open and you need a really nice bright carry bag, nice one that you can put all your goodies that you've been spending your money on or your crafty goodness as well. So all of that is coming in $55.92 or $70. $40.42 for you guys stateside. As I always say, you guys crossing Europe, don't you worry. Go to crafterscompanion.co.uk.com.eu and your prices will be across in euros as well. But I believe we may be a way to find out who that Throwback Thursday is, Joe. Absolutely, we will in a moment after I've shared with you the last of our craft fault deals from Hunky Dory, of course. This is wonderful waterfalls for him and for her. Uh, is a multi buy 19.98 or 29 dollars and three cents saving you 15 percent it is however limited stock that one so you'll need to be quick for that one uh what a great wake up uh call it's been craig loads of love for those tiffany products uh, in the comments there uh, thanks for letting me uh you know come gate crash the show again it's always my absolute pleasure i hope you're going to do it again tomorrow yeah. You come back tomorrow? Okay, you twist my arm. Excellent, brilliant. So we're going to have Joe tomorrow. However, as I said a moment ago, we are going to tell you who that throwback Thursday was. So here's the picture. Who's that little, little cutie? If you guessed it right, it's coming up on your screen right in a moment. It is, of course, Rebecca. Oh, look how cute. Oh, it's like... She's got like little Easter eggs or something there, which is a little girl and then a puppy on the left. So if you guessed Rebecca, then you guessed absolutely correctly. So there we go. And we're going to be seeing her actually very soon, actually. I think over the next couple of days. What's today? Saturday. Rebecca's going to be in. So if you've not seen her before, do tune in and uh, give her your love and support. But that's not, well, that's me for today. Uh, later on, coming up on launch day, you're going to have Joey at Joey. Who's Joey? Joey and Debbie, they're coming up on launch day. So that's going to be uh, with those textured layering stamps. So that is uh, 3 p.m. here in the UK. <laughs> 3 p.m. in the UK, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern for you guys stateside. Or you want to come back later on and see all these incredible goodies that are in that cartload. So that's going to be 7 p.m. here in the UK, 2 p.m. Eastern time, or 11 a.m. Pacific time. I think it's a good idea for me that I just need to go home and do some prep now. Uh, I think we'll leave it to the professionals of Joey and Debbie uh, for the remainder of the day on Crafters TV. Thank you once again for your company today. I'm going to see you tomorrow, whereas probably I'm going to be even more high as a kite as we get one day closer to Wrestlemania oh and the weekend as well of course uh, yes thank you once again do tune in later on for launch day I know you're going to absolutely love those stamps I'm going to see you right here same place same time tomorrow for a wake up call with Craig uh, 12 noon here in the UK 7am eastern time for you guys stateside have a lovely rest of the day watching Crafters TV and I will see you then bye <laughs>